Now look, I absolutely love a Harley and I've got a particular soft spot for the Softail lineup. They're all powered by this massive Milwaukee 8 V-Twin pumping out dollops of torque, roughly the same chassis, but they've all got little tweaks and changes and variations in spec that give them all a bit of their own character. One that I've been dying to check out is the Lowrider S. This bike got updated last year and I think it looks like it'll be my cup of tea. Thankfully, Harley UK have loaned me this one for a couple of weeks, but I thought the best thing to do to tell you about it and where it sits in the lineup is head down here to Cardiff Harley Davidson and compare it to two of the other soft tails I've featured recently on the channel. It was only about a month ago I was on the street bob riding up some of the mountain roads. I absolutely love that day out. And then I've also had the fat bob recently on the channel as well. Each of them certainly has its own vibe. And so if your head's spinning when you're looking at the soft tail lineup, today's for you because I'm going to go through each bike and tell you what kind of rider might prefer each. But as always, a massive thanks to Cardiff Harley Davidson for letting me borrow a couple of their demo bikes. It's an awesome shop with great staff and loads of good roads and mountains to ride up nearby. So do give them a shout if you ever fancy trying one. There's a link in the description to their demo form. So I'll start with this, the Street Bob, because price-wise, this is pretty much the entry point into the Softail lineup. That said, for 2021, they've updated it with the 114 cubic inch version of the Milwaukee 8 V-Twin. So you're still getting the same huge engine as the other two bikes. Previously, you could only get it with the 107, and that means that you get a bit more power and torque out of this. Now, peak power isn't really the name of the game with these bikes, but where the action really is, is the peak torque, 155 newton meters, right down at 3,000. 250 rpm and given that it's actually a nice slender little bike it's actually about 10 kilograms lighter than the low rider or the fat bob in fact that makes it the lightest 114 powered bike in the soft tail lineup so on paper it has a bit of a performance advantage but when you look at the rest of it it's really set up for that easy lazy cruising style Take the riding position, for example, you do have like mid position foot pegs, which I prefer for slightly more aggressive riding to the forward controls. But look at these mini eight bars, you sat up high up and it really does give you a comfy cruising position, makes you feel like a bit of a boss, but in terms of like hustling it through corners, it's not really built for that. Suspension wise, it gets decent shower right way up forks. They're not top notch, they just do the job for cruising around. And it's the same story with the brakes. You've just got a single disc at the front on this bike. It's decent enough, but when I found myself sort of charging into corners on those mountain roads, you really do need to stomp on the rear brake, use it at the same time as the front. And between them, you get enough stopping power for some quicker riding. But clearly it's not the bike out of the range that's intended for harder riding. If you want to take it easy, enjoy a comfortable riding position and look good in the process then this is certainly one to look at now personally if i was buying a cruiser i probably want something you could push that little bit harder with and the fat bob is intended for exactly that you still get the 114 cubic inch version of the milwaukee 8 v twin i think on the spec sheet it says it's got a bit more power at the top end than the street bob but ultimately it's all about that mid-range torque which is pretty much the same the chassis is largely the same design you've still got this hardtail look but with the monoshock hidden inside not a particularly rare approach for a cruiser now. Stuff like the Triumph Bobber, Indian Scout, they all use it. Looks really clean, gives it that classic look, but you get all the benefits of a modern monoshock design. But there are four big differences on this bike when you compare it to the Street Bob. The first being twin discs at the front. You get so much more stopping power and you can ride it more like a regular bike where you don't need to give it so much rear brake. They're still Harley owned branded calipers. They're not like top notch sports brakes, Brembo branded or anything like that. But there's certainly enough stopping power there to haul up a big ass bike like this. Secondly, you get these Showa cartridge upside down forks, much better spec than the ones on the Street Bob. And although there's no adjustability, so you can't change the preload or the rebound or the compression damping, you're still gonna get all the benefits of upside down forks. So more rigidity, less unsprung weight. So it's gonna feel tighter at the front and more responsive. Thirdly, in terms of the riding position, this just feels completely different. It feels stubby at the front and lower. You've got these low flat bars that allow you to get over it and sort of manhandle it a bit. And also the seat height feels that little bit higher. So, you know, you feel like you're on top of the bike rather than really laid back and in it. When you're riding the bike harder, you know, this sort of position is much more favorable for me. Last of the looks, I mean, this is like the intro to some of the stylistic changes that Harley are making now with stuff like the Pan America, 
Africa. The incoming 1250 Custom that's due in about a week or so. You know, they really look quite modern and this bike I reckon was like the precursor to that visual design. You've got much more like minimal branding, flat colors, a lot of blacked out components, some touches of bronze, which you'll see on some of those other bikes as well. And then distinctively at the front, that wide rectangular headlight, which personally I really like it, but I know it can be a bit divisive. And for me, that's where this bike, the Lowrider S kind of slots in. It's got a lot of the same performance upgrades as the Fat Bob. So you get those fat front forks, you get the twin discs, so it's good on the brakes. You also get a similar-ish riding position. I mean, the seat is very low, 690 mil, so you really do feel like you're sat right in the bike, even though it does have fairly flat bars, but it's certainly not as relaxed as something like the Street Bob. And yet at the same time, it does have a bit more of that classic cruiser Harley aesthetic. This is a beautiful looking bike in my book. I just think the overall stance and silhouette of it is instantly recognizable as a Harley, but there are plenty of nice touches as well. I love this little fairing on the front with the small round LED headlight. The upside down forks and twin discs at the front, you know, they make it look more sporty and purposeful and a bit more beefy. Black is a great color choice for any bike in my book, but I think it works particularly well on this bike, especially with that pop of bronze that they've added with the finish on the cast wheels. And I even like how they've echoed it in this classic Harley logo on the tank here. You know, I'm no like diehard Harley expert, but I do know that the original lowrider of the late 70s and 80s was a proper iconic classic model really highly regarded. And I think that's what I like about the visual design of this bike. Quite often with retros and classic style bikes, stuff like the Bonnevilles, you're looking a bit further back in terms of the styling. It's a little bit dangerous to go into that kind of 70s and 80s zone where perhaps some of those designs haven't had enough time to age to actually look retro and they start to maybe just look dated. But this is a prime example of where it can work. The cast wheels, especially on this bike, you know, they just really give it that 80s, 70s, 80s look, as does the fairing and the choice of logo. And for me, it's up there with my favorite looking Harleys easily. And look, no bike is without its drawbacks. I mean, this is a performance orientated soft tail, but it's never gonna compete with like a sports naked on the road. If you push it too hard, it's not gonna enjoy it, but it can be super satisfying to ride when you do find your rhythm. It's all about smoothness and flow. And I really enjoy giving it a bit of a hustle around South Wales this morning. You do get a nice big 19 liter fuel tank on this bike. So it has a lot more range than these other two, and it's large enough to house a couple of analog clocks. It certainly looks good, but you do have to glance down every time you want to see your speed or your revs or to see if your indicators are on or anything like that. And then there's the price, 16,995, I believe this one starts from. That's for the black. If you want a color option, you're going to pay a few hundred quid more. Obviously, there are far more technologically advanced bikes out there for that kind of money. With this one, you basically just get ABS and keyless. But that said, you know, Harleys do hold their value exceptionally well. So whether that's the residual on a PCP that keeps your monthly payments pretty low, or if you just pay cash and hold on to it for a couple of years and flip it on, you're not really going to lose a lot of money. And I think honestly, all that stuff aside, some people who want a Harley, they just want a Harley. And if you're looking for a soft tail, something that goes a bit, something that's designed to push, but that really does have that Harley style, then it's pretty difficult to look past the Lowrider S. 